about these styles and technology at the end. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Ron Dvorsky, as I said earlier. Not the NFL player. Um, okay, so first of all, I'll go for Cory to tell a little bit about what we're doing. Trinity Audio is a company by Somoto, a publicly traded company in the TLB stock exchange. We are ad tech veterans with a deep understanding of the publisher landscape. We were all part of Trinity's sister company, Tim Media, a video monetization solution for publishers, which was acquired by Somoto in 2016. In 2017, we set forth to develop a set of products that brings value to all three pillars of the ecosystem, publishers, users, and advertisers with our unique content and technology solution. The result, Trinity Audio. So first of all, I want to say thanks. Um, okay, the, our, our fairy, fairy tale story starts about two and a half years ago. <coughs> and I was reading an article going down the elevator, uh, got into my car, and said to myself, there's no reason in 2017 I can't listen to an article I just started reading. And this is uh, how the story. So, what, what exactly do we do? I'm going to show you a few demos of how our product is in live environment. Uh, and then we're going to talk a little bit about what we're doing together uh, with all you guys. solution and uh, uh, by the way how, how many from the audience are engineers R&D raise your hands thank you very much business guys product guys and girls sorry about it <laughs> okay so let's let's see the first uh, uh, um, demo um, what you'll see is our native player on the, on the demo page and uh, we the fab we call it a fab which is a floating action button it's basically a small button that appears or disappears depending if the player is in view or not in view. You can see the fab over here on the left downside. This is the player. Artificial intelligence is too important to leave to Google and Facebook alone. Let's develop a public research. Okay, so this is the first example of a simple use case of the, use case of the player. And of course, we're talking about the session is about monetization and text to speech. So let's see the uh, advertising part of it. We'll use a preamble for this uh, uh, demonstration. And again, the floating action button. Just a yeah. quick word from our sponsor. Buying a home is smarter than renting. If you're ready to buy, First Community is the right lender. First time buyers can buy with no money down. That's right, no down. Okay, so as you can see on the player, first of all, we show the user and we also say to the user that there's an ad being placed before the content and then the content will be, uh, uh, will be played. It's important because it's a new use case for, for the users. So they need to understand that this is the, the experience that they're going to have. And of course, you can see also, uh, I can give you the demo uh, page URL later on and you can all play with that. There are different kind of configurations. Let's, let's see another okay. one with a companion ad. A lot of the audio ads are coming with companion ads this day. Just a quick word from our sponsor. Buying a home is smarter than renting. If you're ready to buy, First Community is the right lender. First time buyers can buy the... Okay. So these are the basic demos of how we are uh, using uh, our player. There are a lot of other units that we are using, but let's, as I said earlier, let's, let's talk a little bit about the Wordpress plugin that we released with, uh, with Polly. And uh, basically, uh, here in a half ago, something like that, yeah, something around that, Polly released their own WordPress plugin. <coughs> uh, and we found out there is segments of content creators that are looking uh, to have a text speech solution on their content, uh, but they don't want to open an AWS account because they <coughs> don't want to tech fast, they don't want to pay for it, they don't want any other excuse. Uh, so. Uh, we decided that what we're going to uh, uh, offer them is the option to have the solution for free based on credits. And how we create those credits, we create those credits based on ads. And the reason that we are basing it on ads is our two reasons. One of them, we need to generate money, and the other thing is based on our AWS account, and we don't want to get bankrupt, so we need to generate some revenue out of it. So basically how it goes, you the user will press play on the content of the uh, publisher that downloaded the WordPress plugin. Uh, we will place an ad, 
as a period before the content, in the in the middle of the content, at the end of the content, and then it will generate revenue. Of course, after the ads, and then the publisher will get credit based on the revenue we generated, and then this credit will give them uh, uh, the option to create more uh, relevant uh, audio content. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the tech side of things. So let's talk about the, uh, the basic thing, how, how do we create a new uh, account for a new uh, content creator or new publisher. Basically, uh, we create a certain key to validate that this is a new publisher that is now using our WordPress plugin, and of course we have the credit allocated to the relevant publisher. And uh, once we uh, confirm that this is a relevant uh, user of ours, uh, we will create the relevant content and we will pay for the user to press play on the page. Uh, a little bit behind the scenes of how we analyze the content. So first of all, what we do is we need to understand which part of the content is the text part of it and which part of it is uh, irrelevant content like, for example, the word advertisement that comes out before an ad. Uh, you don't want to read it out to the user, it's irrelevant. And uh, then what we do to the text, we hash it to understand if there were any changes. Uh, if there was any kind of a change, we will reproduce the other content because there is a good chance that the content was updated and uh, we need to update the users, of course, uh, to listen to the relevant audio. And of course, once every, every checkbox is checked, we will start playing <coughs> uh, uh, relevant audio and uh, audio content. Um, we are not counting only on a, a polio, uh, we're also counting on a lot of other AWS uh, services like Translate, EC2, Load Balancers, S3 to uh, storage our uh, audio files. Uh, we are using, of course, Amazon Poly for, um, for saving the audio and, of course, uh, turning it from te text to audio. And we also use speech marks. I will talk a little bit about speech marks later on. I will explain how we use it and why, why we think it's a really important service that Poly provides. Uh, but basically, you can look at the ar architecture. Uh, the, the setup is quite, as I said earlier, with the example of the WordPress plugin. We analyze the text, we hash it, uh, and then basically, if we need to create the, uh, the audio file, we send it to Poly, get the audio, the MP3 file back, and pay to the user. If it's already uh, was produced, we just go to our S uh, S3 and uh, play the relevant audio file to the user. Okay, and again, we're talking about monetization and text to speech, so let's talk about the advertisement part. Um, so uh, we, as I said in, in the beginning, uh, in Trinity, we come from the uh, video landscape before we came into the audio landscape, so we are familiar with all things related to ad serving and, and whatnot. And, I hope not. Um, so, in general, how does it work in the, uh, in the audio landscape? And those of you that come from an uh, uh, advertising background, you, you must understand that audio right now is where video was 10 years ago and where display, banner, uh, and advertising was at 15 or 20 years ago. So basically, you have a, a, an ad server uh, once our player is being uh, uh, uploaded uh, on a web page, being basically being embedded on the <coughs> page, we uh, call our relevant advertisers and tell them this is the user, this is the web page we're in, this is the content that uh, we're gonna play, and ask them if there is a relevant ad for us. If there is a relevant ad, we'll do what we call a, a prefetch mechanism, which basically will place the ad on our servers prior to the click on the uh, relevant player of the user. Uh, so when the user will click on it, we can uh, place the ad, and again, we can do it in any manner we, we see fit, whether at the beginning, in the middle, or in the end of the content. And, well, this is about it in, in regard to the ad serving. Uh, and as I told you earlier, we're gonna uh, uh, talk a little bit about the speech marks. So, speech marks. Speech marks are basically the service is, uh, I'm sending a specific text uh, to Polly, and they will, uh, and their answer will be, okay, you have a comma <coughs> after 22 seconds, you have a, a new line after uh, 35 seconds and you have any kind of speech mark with the timeline. And why this is important? For us it's really important because we want to understand when would be the best time to place an ad within the content. Okay? We don't want to do it in the middle of the sentence, we don't want to do it, uh, I don't know, in the middle of a, a paragraph that the, uh, 
that you don't want to stop the content in between, and therefore we use SpeechMark to analyze the text and to understand what would be the best place to add a uh, text and add within uh, a specific uh, uh, audio piece. Okay, so, so I'm just going from, from the start. So we talked about the workers plugin, we talked about uh, how we, add, why we are using ads and how we are using ads within whether our workers plugin or our general solution and how we use speech marks to uh, insert ads in the relevant places. Um, some stats in where, where we are standing right now, we are over 100 publishers already live. We get a lot, a lot of data about user consumption and how they like to use uh, the content and what do, what do they prefer, uh, which content we prefer to engage with. Uh, LTR, uh, recent full rate, uh, we see over 90%. Uh, which is a KPI which is really, really important for advertisers. There are not a lot of KPIs for advertisers. You have CTR, which is the clicking on the banner. There's a lot of, in the audio uh, uh, landscape, there are a lot of ads that come with companion banner and then the user will click uh, on the ad uh, to have some sort of engagement. Um, it's not a good KPI, it's actually a bad one because in most cases I'll have my phone in my back pocket so <coughs> I won't click on any kind of banner. But this is what they have right now, and LTR, which is listed for it. Did I listen to the whole ad, or did I not? Uh, we are seeing we are uh, over three. We are actually close to four million today. Uh, Player loads on the amount of pages that we see on a daily basis. Um, average CPM again for those of you who are not count from the advertisement side. Uh, CPM is a cost per uh, a meal for a thousand impression, and it means that. Uh, you get around three to five dollars. This is, and I'm talking about the, the basic advertisement um, um, cost, or actually revenue, I should say. Um, and it goes up. Uh, if we are talking about a uh, you know targeted audience, it goes up to ten dollars CPM. And if we are talking about podcasting, it even goes up to fifteen and twenty dollars CPM, uh, which is lower than video, <laughs> but it's higher than display. Again, display banners and. Video, of course, I don't need to explain. Uh, fill rate, uh, we're talking about fill rate, which is over 70%, uh, which means that out of 100 times I'm calling my advertiser for an ad, 70% of the time we'll get an ad uh, answered back, which is higher than, for example, higher than video, but lower than display. And CPR on average, again, depends on the, uh, the amount of time our players being embedded on a specific uh, web page, uh, is uh, 3% and higher. Uh, and we see that. Uh, the longer time a website is using any kind of text to speech solution, you get any kind of a player that basically read out the text for a user, we'll see the engagement will go up. We have a publisher that uh, have embedded this solution almost a year ago, and we're seeing seven and eight and nine uh, uh, percent, which is, I think, amazing. And <coughs> we're talking a lot about it. My prophecy that at the end of the day, a uh, text to speech solution like what Wally provides and what we are providing, it's it, it would be a commodity for a website because at the end of the day, it just makes sense. Um, I think, ah, we now have some for, for some uh, Q&A's. Questions? Yeah, so um, you had a translate on the uh, slide. How do you integrate translate and what are some of the things that you did to it? So, um, we have 26 languages right now. Uh, some of them in uh, uh, sorry, the highest level, which is Neural uh, TTS. And basically, we have uh, the picture on, on the demo. I <coughs> back to that, but there's a small blob on it. Uh, you press the blob, and you will have uh, six languages. This is the default. And of course, any kind of publisher that wants to embed the solution can choose which kind of uh, languages he wants to have on, on his website. Okay, I think the uses I had in mind, so hypothetically, New York Times. Um, somebody from Israel could also read New York Times, nobody's stopping that. Could it translate it into um, uh, Hebrew, and then your plugin will read it in Hebrew? So I'm, I'm talking to Robin a lot when they're going to uh, launch Hebrew in, in Poly, and we're still waiting. But, no, but, but the next case is definitely in that sense, definitely. Uh, but the only language where you will translate and read it through Polly. Okay, well, what are some of the languages you're curious? The languages, uh, 29 languages, so uh, you know, various uh, varieties of English, like US English, British English, Australian English, Indian English, uh, Hindi, French, Spanish, German, Italian, 
Okay, so if you take the French then, so New York Times could be translated in, in French, and then his plugin will read it in, in French. Yeah. So is that an offer that you give to the, your publishers? Your publishers get to choose whether or not they want to translate and which languages they translate? Yeah. Or is it a user choice or a publisher? So now it's a publisher choice, but we are working on making it available, like identifying the IP and then understand where we get from geolocation we are, and then we have the relevant options. So it doesn't matter what the article language is, but the ad and the tweets are being translated. Yes, that's right. Wow. So from the AWS perspective, Poly offers text to speech in a variety of languages. Translate, which is from a sister service, will translate from text to text from say English to Spanish in a variety of different combinations. And then from Trinity Audio's perspective, they have the ability to leverage both of those services to create an experience for their publishers, such that they can say to their publishers, you can choose to take your text from language A, translate to language B, or C, or D, and then voice it through Poly in any of those languages so that your end users have that option to select uh, which language they want to hear this content. In this case, you could have Yes, you're right. There, there are choices that, I, for example, if I'm in Paris and I'm reading the New York Times, we'll have an ad in French, and then the article the views we would like to listen to would be in English. So it sounds like the next step would be the ads in different languages as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so, for example, when we launched the WordPress, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> So when we first launched the, the WordPress plugin, this was a poly plugin that we launched in collaboration with, uh, with WordPress. Um, the, uh, the functionality was just poly. So you take your content and you voice it in different languages. An update to that plugin later was, now we integrate with Translate as well. So you can take the content in language A, translate it to language B, uh, and you can now listen to it in those different languages. So a lot of these offerings are iterative as we're releasing that first version, we're getting feedback and we're adding new functionality. Uh, and one of the major uh, benefits of what Trinity Audio has done is not only offering it uh, such that it's free for, uh, for publishers, uh, but through those ads, they can now monetize and generate revenue. So the ads are based on the content or based on the speech? So basically, um, the ads are based, first of all, on the advertising. The advertisers looking to advertise is interesting, uh, and uh, uh, what most of the advertising then it's important. You know, I, I'll say something about advertising in audio in general. Okay, um, there is the direct part of it, basically direct deals that are being closed with a specific advertiser, and this is the programmatic part. So, and uh, now I'll, I'll explain a little bit about different programmatic are basically you large exchanges where you have a stream of different ads, and basically based on the, the relevant da data that you are sending to this uh, programmatic partner, they will place an ad. You know, they, they have a cookie sync of some sort of uh, uh, sort, you know, user data, location, yeah, that, that. And so, and if, if I compare the audio landscape to the video landscape, most of it is direct deals, I mean, you are engaging some sort of negotiation with the advertiser and you close a specific deal for, uh, for your traffic, uh, which in, I would say this is around 67%, which is what video part, I would say it's around 40%, <coughs> but the programmatic part is, is getting bigger in all of this. Is, in general, where the industry is going. Um, so, going back to the question, um, there is a cookie sync, so basically I'm sending relevant information to uh, the advertiser, and based on the uh, data that I'm sending the advertiser, he chooses which kind of content he, uh, which kind of advertiser, sorry, uh, he will place. Uh, of course, I have some control over it uh, in regard to the content. The good thing about it, audio advertisement right now, it's it's a clean place. There, there's no like you know firearms or uh, suspicious dating apps or something like that. So so we are we're, at least for now we are we're in a good place. Do you plan? Over time, we will add more uh, neural functionality. It's, it's always a matter of prioritization. You know, do we focus on expanding the neural voices across different languages versus more speaking styles, you know, new speaking styles, or the same speaking styles across different languages? Uh, but yes, eventually, uh, you can expect to see more neural voices over. I, I couldn't hear. 
previous question, but I just wanted to confirm the <coughs> of poly. Um, how does it uh, deal with the enunciation of complex medical terminology? So, uh, good question. So, anything that you throw at poly, whatever language, out of the box, work very well, first of all. Uh, when you get into something like medical terminology or, say, an acronym that you might want to have uh, read out in a particular way, so anything where maybe out of the box it's not performing the way that you'd like it to. You have essentially two things that you can do. One is that you have different SSML tags. These are tags that allow you to modify the output speech. So you can modify, for example, the speech rate. You can make the voice speak faster or slower. You could raise the pitch, you could lower the pitch. There are a variety of things that you can do. You also have tags that allow you to modify the phonetic transcription for that sequence. So if you have a sequence of letters that correspond to a medical term or to anything, right? Uh, you know, ABC, which you want to expand to uh, Abracadabra. Uh, you can basically go into your text and you can add that tag and say, uh, replace ABC with Abracadabra or this sequence of letters with this sequence of phonetic transcriptions. And you can do that uh, through an SSML tag. And so if you do that once, it'll apply to that text. You can also create a lexicon, which is a separate feature, which is basically a, uh, it's like your own dictionary that's uh, yours as a customer that is uh, tied to your account ID. And so anytime you encounter that medical term, uh, throughout any text that you synthesize, once you've got that lexicon created, uh, it will replace that sequence of characters with that phonetic transcription and pronounce it the way that you like. So if you've got, you know, 100 or however many medical terms and you don't want to have to check them every single time, uh, then you just create a library, or rather a lexicon, uh, which is sort of a search and replace kind of mechanism uh, that will replace the, the built-in uh, phonetic transcription through poly with whatever you override it with. But as, as of now, there's no There's no specific feature for medical terminology. Right? There are those two features to update any sequence of characters to a phonetic transcription. Uh, that does come up every once in a while. So uh, if you do have any trouble with that, I'm happy to hear more details about the way you can. I can say from my experience, and we are dealing really with big pharmaceutical companies, that this, this didn't came as a complaint on, on, on their side. Pharmaceutical. Please try it on the console. You can just throw in some words and see how it does. Uh, I have a use case where I have um, uh, tens of thousands of articles a day um, that maybe we want to offer the service to. Uh, obviously, that would have a lot of charges to uh, frequently to record all these tests and read. Uh, it's most likely never get us users. So, how do you deal with that on the other side? No one's just reading or listening to all these WordPress articles. So, so actually, it's a great question. Basically, what we do, we don't. And create the audio file uh, prior to the end. So the first time we'll create the audio file, we'll the fir first user that we click on the, uh, on the player, and then we'll do the first time that we will produce it, and then basically we'll save files. What's the uh, warm up time for that? Uh, it depends. For the regular TTS, it's around, uh, I think, less, less than 10 seconds, okay, even, even less than five. Uh, for the NTTS, it's, it's a bit longer than that. And the way we are solving that is we create two files. First, use the basic one, uh, but during the first time we will also create the second one, and then for the next time the user will click on the uh, on the player, they will get the NTTS version. So of course, when we are talking about English and the relevant language right. that's important. Maybe like cash the first paragraph, and then while that was playing, on the way to the rest. I don't know, actually, because because like in, I don't know, uh, um, around five seconds, right? Five to ten seconds. This, by the way, is showing our CTO, so he's the brain inside. Yeah, it's not worth it to do the split for paragraphs. We just translate the, we just audify the whole article and then generate it again. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Uh, how do you measure the effect of the user clicking the audio? Like how, for you, Greg, how do people click on? Okay, basically we are, uh, the way we're implemented on the website, it's just page so every time we are being uploaded uh, on the page we know whether the user clicked on us or not so we, we have okay if you uploaded it does <coughs> the user have to click to hear that right? yes of course but then once it's, he, he clicks on the uh, on the player then we have the amount of users that click and we press the amount of users that click on it have you tried other models uh, besides uh, ad revenue or I know you're not company but uh, 
So yes, yes. yeah. And for sure. Yeah, so we are actually, there are a few large brands that, that uh, we are together uh, exploring the, the usage of, of volume and text to speech to enhance subscription. And it's it's also a conversation that doesn't stop only on the indented player we did the page, it also goes to smart speakers and things like that. And uh, it's in exploration with some, some of the biggest brands also in the US and in, in the UK that they do want the user to have First of all, the audio experience, and they want to have their audio experience not only on the text speech, also their own, because they create also audio content in general, and they want to leverage this content to, to push the YouTube subscription channel. So we are exploring that, and uh, there are a lot of solutions. Available in 11 US English uh, or 8 US English voices and 3 UK English voices. So that's what we did there is we took the original recordings for the standard voices and we used the new technology to create a neural version of that voice. And so those original recordings, uh, because of the technology that I described earlier that's concatenative, those recordings uh, were, were based on having the voice actor read in a very steady state, right? Same pitch, same speech rate very consistent, because what we're trying to do is take little snippets of sound. Uh, otherwise, you might get more modulation as you're synthesizing. So the neural voices also have that very steady state uh, kind of feel. So we have it available in uh, eight US English, three UK English. Uh, we also have a US Spanish voice, a Brazilian Portuguese voice. And then now we have the conversational and news <coughs> master for math version. So that's uh, the current state of neural voices. And um, Uh, so SSML is a standard uh, that, that is not just for Amazon Poly, but we do have a few tags that are specific to Poly. Does that answer the question? Yeah, that's fine. Because I think if you use for a platform, if your genesis would be a system, uh -huh. but be the system that supports over there on the platform. Got it, yeah. So yeah, so you would use those tags within Poly when you're calling Poly to specify whatever change you might want, whether it's to change the speech rate or, uh, or change the uh, phonetic transcription. Is there expanded SSML support? Was it limited and now more SSML tags are supported in quality? Uh, since we launched in 2016, we've added new functionality. Uh, so for example, speech part is something that we didn't have on the day that we launched in 2016, but we added it later so that you could get metadata about the timing of uh, everything from where an SSML tag is to the sentence level, uh, down to the phoneme, so each individual sound. So if you have a lip syncing case, for example, you have an avatar that's <coughs> mouthing the words, you can have the timing information for when each sound begins and ends so that you can uh, set that up so that the reading and the lips are moving in the coordination. Uh, so we've added some tags over time, um, and we're in the process of reaching parity such that the neural voices have the same set of tags as the standard. Right now it's not full parity for this voice. How many neural languages do you have supported today? So four, US English, UK English, US Spanish, Brazilian Portuguese. Okay. Yeah. Neural features uh, it is not available today, but it, it will over time. Tomorrow. <laughs> 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 Waiting for the key. <laughs> uh, for the caching output that you're putting on, is that to, to a standardized format like MP3 or WAVE? Can you repeat it? For, for the, the cache uh, uh, poly output, mm -hmm. uh, is that like a standard WAVE format or MP3? MP3, yeah. And that's out of the box. You mentioned you have some articles that you are interested in synthesizing. How many of you guys have a use case similar to the one described here where it's uh, based on synthesizing articles? Um, anybody here using Poly today? A few of you? Anybody want to share some of the experiences that you've had or uh, with what you're doing with Poly? I have one more question for you. Um, yeah. For Affinity, let's say you have a use case where you want to put your own apps. Uh, could you do it? Yes, of course. Uh, as I said earlier, we come from, uh, from the video landscape, 
to begin. So basically, we are our own app server. So we can integrate either through any app server, other publisher, or other company can do it. Or basically, place the relevant apps on our app server and serve it for uh, our clients. So we can do both. Whatever, whatever the fact.
So it's, it's also an accessibility issue. Yeah, yeah. 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 Timing of when to place the ad is one of the most important things for publishers. Do they do they care a lot about where the, in the text that shows up? I think it's important. It's okay. I, I must say that it's important to the publisher and the advertiser uh, because at the end of the day they are both focused on the user. And if the user experience is good, they are happy. So in many cases they don't want it to be at the beginning of the article, uh, whether it's like in the middle or in the end. Uh, so first of all, the user will get some sort of content presented to him, and then it will be added. And, and, and the good thing about it, the other thing that is we see that the users are engaged, that they are, uh, they understand the form. Mm -hmm. And how much do you learn across different publishers versus within a single publisher just testing your Because <coughs> imagine you've got different configurations, so you're learning about sort of where things work better or not as well. So I must say, the good thing about it is a blue ocean. Articles and the publisher, uh, it just a lot. And you know, we see that there's a difference between sports or entertainment, news, not, and you know, news which is financial and news, news which is political. We see different use cases, and, and it's interesting to see. Mm -hmm. I must say, most of the content that is being clicked on is the, you know, the most, I would say, mainly news is the worst one. Probably the most red ones.
that's also in line with our, our strategy from the, the service perspective, where we're focusing a little less on new SSML features that you would manually uh, insert. For example, we did a, a breath feature so the voices can uh, inject breathing sounds. And you've got the ability to do that manually. So if you want to put a breath sound in a very specific place, you can. And you can make it longer or shorter, <laughs> louder or softer. Right? You can do things like that. But you also have the automatic button, right? where you can just say, add breathing sounds with a certain set of you know, parameters so that you don't have to go trying to figure out where to put it. And the machine learning model will pick essentially where there are commas and periods and sort of the logical places where you might expect a breathing sound from the voice to make it sound more natural if that's something that's desirable. So the, the overall approach is to make the voices sound more and more natural so that you have less and less dependency on SSML tags, uh, whether manual or even automated. And the voices like the conversational and newscaster voices, the whole objective when customers come to us and say, we need more tags to do more things, my, my pushback is actually, you know what? We're trying to create speaking styles so we can do less SSML tags so that you can create a style or you can leverage a style that works well in your use case and you don't need to go back to those tags as much. So from a sort of directional standpoint, that's the way that we're going to do that that works well for uh, for the audio and for the publishing. So we don't have a full-blown solution available for AWS, but we have building blocks for it. Right, so if I'm speaking in English, right, you should be able to use Transcribe to convert that into English text, Translate to convert that into Spanish, Poly to then, uh, and all basically in real time or with very slight delay, so that you and I can have a conversation where we speak two different languages. Um, so, or if you want to, you know, dub something that's on, you know, the TV or the news, right? It's in one language, but you want to make it available in different. Uh, languages for the audience, that kind of thing. So uh, the building blocks are there. We don't have a full-blown solution to package that today, uh, but that's a, a great use case. Take it a step further from the medical arena. Can you talk about the future for physicians to be holding the results of tests by just asking and getting the tests read back to them mm -hmm. and, then, and then transcribing the right. orders right. Right, and some of the questions that we get are from the medical space as well. So we get, you know, we get somebody who's diagnosing something and who wants to be able to read it out and they need to convey that information somewhere else, whether it's in the building or in a different location and get that, that correspondence back quickly and maybe it needs to be translated to a different language and needs to go through a transcribed process into text, maybe into speech. So some of those use cases do come from the medical space. By the way, um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but in, in April actually, uh, um, Alexa was Hyper compliant, which is uh, basically uh, mm -hmm. so it stands in the high regulation things in the US, US, right? But in the US, UK, yeah, yeah. yeah, always a good one. Right. Other questions? Will we ever be able to uh, record our own film? It's a good question. Um, <coughs> So the, the technology today requires a lot of data, a lot of speech recording uh, data in order to generate a new model. Uh, but from a research standpoint, we are working hard on reducing the amount of data uh, that's required to do that. So uh, the, the benefit of having lots of data is stability in the voice. So if you want the voice to not only sound high quality, but be able to throw anything at it uh, and have it be consistently high quality, the more data you use, the better your model. Uh, but over time, we do expect to be able to reduce that uh, from a production standpoint. We've got a bunch of you know, research that's going on in the background, we're testing different things, uh, but eventually they'll become uh, faster. Now, to get to the point where we productize that so that customers can then, say, build a voice based off of a limited set of data, or potentially their own voice, um, that's something that we discuss, but that's not something that we can uh, share any timelines for any public. But that question comes up, people want to know for various reasons. Uh, whether it's for their own voice, or somebody that they know, or you know, a spokesperson for their company, uh, or they want to create their own branded experience, that kind of thing. Um, uh, 
but it's, this is an opportunity also to plug, you know, reach out to us individually if you have any follow-up questions along those lines, right? So, um, So if you've, uh, on your side, compiled the quote information, and you've got a body of text, you send that text to the API, and you get it back in real time. So from a latency perspective, it's essentially immediate. Right? Uh, in the case you were describing, you know, five to 10 seconds, but that's putting in other layers, uh, including you know, fetching the, the audio ad, that kind of thing. Right? But if you've got your quote, and you've generated the contents of that quote, whatever the, the numbers are, right? and you've got the text uh, that's part of that body, you send that to Polly in whatever voice you choose, you get it back immediately, and it's just up to you to send that information, uh, that you know, that audio that you generated. Um, now, to address the Alexa question, because you asked, public voices are available through Alexa if you want to build an Alexa skill. So, if you create an Alexa skill, by default, you have the Alexa voice. But as of a year and a half ago, I think, uh, you also have access to poly voices through Alexa. So now you can switch, and you can have a male voice or a female voice or different voices. Uh, through Alexa, so you can create that experience. And there's a voice tag, which is one of these SML tags, kind of like the speech rate or the pitch. You can choose which voice you want to use, and you specify Matthew or Joanna or whichever voice you want. Is that? Finally, the uh, customer that decides to So if you want to create an interactive experience where there's a, a dialogue back and forth between the end user, you can do that through an Alexa skill. We also have a service called Lex, uh, which is the, essentially a, a chatbot. And so with Lex, you can either choose text to text, so if somebody's typing and the system writes back, or it can be voiced. And if it's a voice command, then the end user speaks to the system, Lex interprets those commands, and then plays back speech, and the speech that you'll hear is Paul. So there's an integration between Poly and Lex, so that if you create that chat experience and you want the spoken interaction, it's a Poly voice that you'll hear. So these are really just the, the building blocks. So the experience that you uh, is for you to create in terms of what the end user hears and if there's an interactive experience, uh, how the system responds. So Alex is one option and, and Lex is another. Do you know anything here that's I'm actually from Mutual of Omaha. We are using legs. <laughs> 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 Uh, but we have a variety of customers. We've got a lot of uh, customers in 
what I think of as an education space, but that's kind of a broad category. Anything from uh, your learning uh, math modules, or you're, you're reading uh, short articles, or you're creating little videos. Sometimes teachers will create uh, through, um, through some of our customers these video experiences so that the student will have you know, two characters that are talking to each other in a little video. Uh, so a lot of interactive experiences like that. We have some customers who use Poly through radio. Um, so for example, they'll inject um, loops on the radio where they have certain announcements that they synthesize. There's a great example from uh, FM uh, uh, Yokohama in Japan, where when there's an emergency, there was a, a series of typhoons a few years ago, uh, and what they did is they created a loop in English and in Japanese, where the news station, when the power went out throughout the region, the news station uh, was able to synthesize speech with Polly in English and Japanese, and they created a six-minute loop and so instead of having people live on the radio talking, <coughs> the people at the radio station were looking at the latest information to find out what's the, you know, the, the latest emergency, you know, the, what should you know if you're listening to the radio, uh, and they were able to update that loop. So the loop just keeps playing so that people who are hearing the radio can find out where are the safe places to go and that kind of thing. Uh, so you've got all kinds of use cases. There's certainly plenty in the accessibility space as well. Um, there's turn-by-turn uh, you know, -turn navigation, so it's really sort of a very broad spectrum, and that's what the, the Poly service was designed to do, is to offer text-to-speech voices, whatever you're using. Uh, but you can also do it. Any other questions? Thank you, everybody.